Hi, this is Professor Evans, and this video is for EET 1214C, which is Intro to Engineering Technology at Valencia College. In this video, we are going to learn the basics of the computer software called Multisim. Multisim is a computer software that we're going to use throughout this course to simulate an electronic circuit. We can use Multisim to design and test a circuit's operation before we actually build it on the breadboard. That way, when we build it on the breadboard, we can use our multi-sim simulation to make sure that the circuit works the way we expect it to. So as we go through the course, we're going to begin each lab by building a circuit in multi-sim first. Then we're going to build that same circuit on our breadboards in our um, lab within the classroom. Then we're going to compare our results for multi-sim and our actual breadboard to make sure that we got the same thing. So multi-sim is very useful to help us check our work and verify that a circuit is working the way it's supposed to after we physically wire it. Multi-sim is going to be used for every exercise in this class, so you will need to have access to it. In your future courses, you will use multi-sim in every course, and you will use it to simulate every lab you're going to build before you get to class. That's called a pre-lab assignment. So when you get to DC circuits or digital systems or any of your other classes, you will have what's called a pre-lab assignment where you'll have to build each circuit that you're going to do in lab using Multisim. You can purchase your own copy of Multisim using the link below. Um, you can also check Canvas for more information on how to get your own copy of Multisim. So as you're watching this video, um, hopefully you're watching this in a lab or from home where you already have access to Multisim and what I'd like you to do is open up Multisim and follow along with me. So when you open up Multisim, here's what you get as your opening screen. You have what's called a schematic here in the middle of the screen and this is where we'll add different components and measurement tools to build our circuits. You'll notice across the top you have a basic menu where you can do a number of things. The file menu allows you to open and close the file, save the file, etc., or print the file. And then we have lots of other menus. Now, Multisim has a lot of functions that we're not necessarily going to hit on in this class. And as you go on to your future classes, you'll learn more and more about the capabilities of Multisim. So for today, I'm just going to go over some basic information about how we search for components, add them to the schematic, and then change some of their values. So when you want to add a component to the schematic, you're going to use the Place menu. And the very first option is Component. You're going to go to Component. This is your library of all components that you can add to the schematic. Things like resistors, capacitors, inductors, power sources, different ICs. There are, if you look here at the bottom, 53,942 components in this library. So there are a lot of things to choose from. Obviously, we're only going to use a few of these in our course. The components are separated into groups. So when you're looking for a component, the first thing you're going to want to do is filter out all of these options by selecting a group. For example, if I want a power source, I'll go to the sources group. And then within the group, I have several different families of different types of sources. We have power sources, signal voltage sources, signal current sources, and so on. Within each family, you have options for different components. And then you'll notice as you click the component, you'll have a symbol that corresponds with that component. So when you're looking for components, and if you're not sure what the name is, but you know what the symbol is, you can try to start looking for a component by looking for the symbol. But ultimately, you'll want to make sure that you read about that component, its name, and its function before you add it to your schematic to make sure that you found the right one. Let's say that I want to start by adding a DC voltage to my schematic. If I go to the power sources, these are my options for basic power sources. And I'm just going to grab the one that says DC power. If you look at the function window, it tells me what it is. This is a DC voltage source. So I'm going to hit OK. And now that component is attached to my mouse. If I move the mouse around, it goes with me. And then wherever I click is where the component will attach itself to the schematic. Then the component window will open up again, allowing me to continue selecting other components that I might want to add. In this case, let's say that I want to grab a resistor. The resistors are found in the basic group. And then if you look through all of these different families, you'll see the resistor family. 
and I can select a resistor to add to my schematic. Notice that there are tons of different values. I can scroll through and find the value I want. Maybe I want a 237 ohm resistor. Maybe I want a 16.9 K resistor. You can scroll through and look for what you want. You can also type what you want up at the top. Let's say that I need a 2.5 kilo ohm resistor. I can type in 2.5 and filter my results. And then I can select the component that I want to add. I can either double click this blue line or click OK. And that component is now attached to my mouse and I can add it to my schematic. So this is how we filter through and look for components. The more you use multi-sim, the more you'll get comfortable with where to find things. A lot of the things we're going to be using in this class are going to be located within the basic group, the sources group, or the TTL group. So the other thing I'm going to grab is called a ground. The ground is a connection point that we're going to add to any circuit. We'll learn more about ground throughout the course and what it means. And now I want to connect all these components together. So if you Notice that my mouse, if I hover near the end of a component, the mouse changes to a little crosshairs. And if I click, I now have a wire that comes out. And I'm gonna take this wire and connect it to where I want it to go and click again. And once I have that black wire turning red, I have a connection. This represents a wire in my circuit. So what I'm gonna do is connect a wire from the source to the resistor and then from the resistor back around to the source. Notice that if I want to get a perfect square and my wires are not automatically forming that for me, here's what you can do. Click once and then let's say I want to make a corner right here. Click again and that wire will attach itself right there. Let's say I want a corner right here. Click again and that wire will attach itself right here. Click again and that wire will attach itself right here and then a final click completes the wire. It turns red, letting me know that everything is connected. Next I'm going to connect my ground and another way that you can connect components is to literally drag them to a wire that's already been established. So for example, if I take this ground right here, drag it up and see how I get a red dot right at the top. That's letting me know that if I let go of the mouse, it will attach itself to the circuit right there. Now I have my circuit. Now let's say that I don't want 12 volts because this source is right now set for 12 volts. Let's say I want five volts. If I double click the component, I get a menu that allows me to make some changes. So for example, I can change the voltage here from 12 volts to five volts and hit okay. And now I have five volts. Or if I wanted to change this resistor from 2.5K to 1.5K, I can double click it Again, I need to go to the value tab to change the value and hit OK. You'll notice that at the top of the component is R1. That's called our reference designator. You can turn those on or off by going to the display tab. Go to use component specific visibility settings. And then if I don't want that R1 at the top, I could click the show res box to remove that and the R1 will go away. I can do the same thing if I don't wanna show the value of the resistor. I can turn it off and I can turn it on. In general, you're always gonna to wanna to have at least the reference designator showing and the value of the resistor on your sheet. But there are times when you might wanna turn it off and that's how you can manipulate the menu. Same thing for the source. If I go to the display tab, I can change what is shown. So if I don't want that reference designator on there, if I don't need it, I can hit OK and turn it off. So the menu where you're going to find things is place component. There's also a few shortcuts up here. For example, if you know you need a source, you can go right to place source. If you know you need something from the basic group, you can go right to basic, etc. So there are a few shortcuts along the top you can use. For example, if I wanted to get a diode, I can click this and it opens up that component window and automatically filters it to the diodes group and then I can just find the diode I want within these families. The other thing you'll notice in multi-sim is on the far right, there's another set of menus. 
These are some of the measurement tools that you can use. For example, there's a multimeter, function generator, watt meter, oscilloscope, and so on. If you take your mouse and hover over each component, there will be a label there that shows you what that component is so that you can figure out what you're looking for. If I wanted to add a multimeter to my circuit, for example, I simply click that button and I get a multimeter that I can add to my circuit. And then I have two terminals that I can use to connect to my circuit. Let's say that I want to measure the voltage for this resistor, but I really don't have room to put my multimeter. I can click and drag all of this and move it down here. And then I have some space to connect my multimeter. For example, now, if I wanted to measure the voltage for this resistor using the multimeter, I can double click it and I can select V for volts. And then I need to actually run the simulation to gather data. To run a simulation, we hit this play button right up here. So once I hit play, I get a measurement on the window. And when you're done collecting that measurement, you're going to go back and hit stop. So that's how we run a simulation. So once your circuit is set up, and you add your components and your measurement tools, you're not gonna see any data until you actually hit play to start running your simulation. When you're done with the multimeter, you can simply close that, but it'll still be there if you decide to open it again later. So there are various tools along the right here that you could use for collecting and analyzing data related to your circuit. Another thing to know is that you can't make the schematic any bigger or smaller. This is just the size that you get. You can zoom in or zoom out, but the size of this window is fixed. So as you're adding components, you wanna make sure that you leave enough room for everything that you might need to add because you can't make the sheet of paper any larger. So that's a quick introduction to multi-sim and how to st start to find things. When you are done with your work, you'll want to save the file. And when you try to save the file, this is the extension that you'll get. Now this is the extension you'll want to have if you wanna open the same file in Multisim again later. So for example, if you're doing some work in the open lab, you wanna take it with you and continue working at home, make sure you save your file as a Multisim 14 file and send that file to yourself or upload it to your cloud storage and you'll be able to open that file in any other computer that also has multi-SIM. However, if you're going to submit a picture of your work to Canvas for an assignment or within a lab report, there are several things you can do. If you want to get a copy of your entire schematic, you can go to File, Print, change the printer to Microsoft Print to PDF, and then you'll get a nice PDF copy of your circuit that's easily able to be printed or to import into a lab report or to upload to Canvas for an assignment. The other thing that you can do is, let's say that you're writing a lab report and you wanna put a picture of this circuit in your lab report. Click and drag. Oops. I zoomed out a little bit. You can click and drag to select what you wanna copy and literally just control C on your, on your computer or right click and go to copy, and then go into Microsoft Word or uh, whatever application you're using to write your lab report and hit paste. And this picture will copy straight into your lab report very easily and um, you can then use that to uh, describe what your circuit was like for your report. So when it comes to your first assignment for this class, the first assignment is called Exercise A. It's the component sheet. You'll see that in your lab manual. What you're going to do is recreate the image you see. It looks like this. You're going to recreate this image in Multisim. This is basically like a scavenger hunt that will allow you to search for components and learn how to place them on the schematic. I have given you a few hints here on where to find some of these components. So you'll see that the group in red is in the sources group, the blue group is basic, the orange group is diodes, transistors, analog, etc. So if you need some help in your scavenger hunt, you can start with this image to figure out where to find things. The other thing you'll notice is that each component has a text label next to it 
explaining what it is. So let me show you how to also add a text label to your multi-sim circuit. Go to place, text, wherever you click on the schematic, you'll get a text box and then you can start typing. You can highlight all of this if you want to and change the font. You can change the size, the color, etc. So that is what you'll do to create the image that you see in your lab manual for this first assignment. You're going to place a text box next to each component and fill it in with uh, the name of the component. So at the end of your assignment, your goal is for your multi-sim diagram to look exactly like the one in the lab manual with all 33 components placed and labeled. A few final hints, if you're having trouble finding the bridge rectifier or the momentary switches, here's a hint on how to find those as well. So as you work on that first assignment, make sure to reach out to myself or a lab assistant for questions and you're gonna upload that first assignment to Canvas as a PDF. That's it for this first video. If you have questions, you can contact me by emailing me using my Valencia College email address shown on the screen. If you were one of my current students, you can go into Canvas and send me a message or you can place a comment on this video and I will respond.